Hey, it's Luke without a darts. Today we are going to build the Silly Butts Alchemist. This is a remarkable blaster that I really have taken a liking to. It's got bearings, these palm bearings uh, that make the prime oh so smooth. And it's just a very well styled, very cool blaster. So let's get right to it. First, let's talk about the tools you're gonna need. They are all really relatively basic. And I am of the opinion that if you can build a Lego set, you can probably build this blaster. It's a little bit more complicated than Legos in reality, but it's not too bad. You're gonna want pliers, an X-Acto knife or other blade, some super glue, an M2.5 Allen key along with an M4, a number one and a number two screwdriver, a pair of scissors, or you can get by with just a knife, a pin punch or other small object that you can use to punch in pins. You can get away with like an Allen key or an old motor here. Lastly, a hammer and a terry cloth just to protect your surface you are working on. In front of me here, you'll see all of the 3D printed parts. These are all the parts that are included in our 3D printed parts kit or in the fully assembled blaster if you choose not to have yours assembled. Also not pictured here is this nice bright orange Silly scar, which is of course designed by Silly himself. And these are included with both our fully assembled and our 3D parts kits. If you printed your own parts, of course, yours are gonna look different. You may run into more fit tolerances if you print your own, but that's where the X-Acto knife comes in as far as correcting things and reprinting and etc. On the side here, you'll see all the various bits of hardware from the O-rings to the spring, the plunger tube, the actual screw hardware, the uh, very important bearings, which give this blaster such a unique prime, and the machined bars and barrel. We'll talk about each of the pieces of hardware as we go along, so I won't tell you all of those right now. So let's get right to it. We're gonna start out by assembling the tensioner. Tensioner is one of the coolest parts of this blaster. You're gonna need some 440 screws, the washer, a 1032 nut, and the uh, bolt that goes with it. This is your actual tensioning bolt in the front. So to assemble this, we're first going to slip the washer on, and we're gonna insert this on the flat side. Then we can take our nut and we can thread that on. You can also put the nut in first so you don't have to hold the large screw. We just used the M4 screw to help hold the nut in place while setting it with the other screws. After that, you're gonna take two of these screws and thread them in through these holes, and these lock this in place. This is a number one screwdriver you'd wanna use, but for the rest of the video, whenever possible, I'm going to use the fast way. Next, we're gonna take the two bars themselves, and we're gonna drive two screws on either side. Note that your bolt should face out the end, not into the center of the bars. It's worth noting here that if you have any marks on your bars, sometimes there are little bits of marks from our production process. The smoothest side of the bars should be facing inwards because the bearings will be riding on them on that inside edge. Now we're gonna assemble the plunger head. You're gonna take this catch bar here and you're gonna insert it into this piece here. It can only go in one way, so you can't mess it up. And then with the catch hole down, this should line up. There's a pretty obvious little indent that holds it in place. And then you're gonna take two M3 by 16 screws and thread those all the way through. After you've done that, you can take your O-ring and place it on top. Then you'll take your longest M3 screw, the M3 by 30, and you're gonna drive it in this way, and that secures the head. Do note that you're gonna want these pieces very tightly together, so make sure everything is very, very firm when you actually assemble. Now we're gonna assemble the core for the ball bearings. This is the slide that makes the prime so smooth. You're gonna need seven of your bearings, all the bearings, and seven of the shortest M3 screws. That's M3 by 12. Each of these is held in the exact same way, but essentially you're gonna to wanna to use pliers to kind of hold this in place, and you're gonna drive the corresponding screw into that bearing. And you'll feel a little tension at the end when you have got to the end and now it should move freely. Each one's a little different as far as how it places, but essentially pliers to kind of drop it in place. I like to hold it with my finger, drop in the screw on the other side and drive it through. This next step is gonna require your barrel. You're gonna to wanna to run your barrel through the actual center and you're gonna drop the top one here. And what we're doing here is we're going to line this up with what the best fit. And this is just to account for print tolerances. So there are three holes here and they are stepped progressively farther away from the barrel. 
And so you're gonna wanna pick the one that lines up the best and it needs to be tight, but not too tight, but you can always put it in and make sure it actually feels like it fits. I believe we're gonna be on the tightest one on the bottom here, so I'm gonna try that one first. It's worth noting you want these to be tight, but you don't want them to be overly tight. So yeah, the, definitely the closest one was the best for me, but your print tolerances and hole tolerances may vary. And on these, we've got the same thing. Both sides have three stepped holes to adjust for your tolerances. I am fairly certain I'm gonna be on the tightest one, at least that's where I think we were on the last one. <laughs> doing things on camera twice as awkward as doing it <laughs> on your own. Yeah, we've got a nice smooth prime there. One thing that Silly did mention is that if you use an anodized barrel, it's not really recommended because you are going to grind that anodization off the side. And uh, additionally, depending on your tolerances, these don't have to be lined up. They could be in two different holes, um, but I wouldn't want you to see them in opposite holes. So they should be, they could be one step off of each other. They could be on the same, but they shouldn't be highest and lowest. It's just gonna mess with your alignment more than it needs to. Next, we're gonna assemble the ram, and you're gonna need these two pieces here, along with four 440 screws and the 012 O-ring, which is the smallest. So we're gonna start by stretching that over the top. We're gonna leave that just about there. Then we're gonna run that through this direction and let that sit loosely. And then finally, we're gonna put this piece on top and squeeze them together, which will push the O-ring just in the right place. And then we're gonna screw four 440 screws into the top here. Now that O-ring that's trapped inside there is what makes the air seal. So it's important that these are all lined up nicely and that you use the correct O-ring. And then while we're at it, we're gonna go ahead and put our O-ring on here. Next, we're gonna take four more 440 screws and you're gonna screw them into these countersunk holes there. These actually hold the ram in place. So you wanna kind of tighten them evenly as you go around. So I put that like most of the way in and then I'll do the one opposite it. And the last two. And then at the very end, I'm gonna go back and just snug up all four of them so it gets nice and evenly tightened. Now we're gonna take our bumper and we're gonna put that on top and you just remove, remove the adhesive. If you ever find this falls off later, they're generally pretty good, but you can always glue it back on, but you wanna put it on as nice and even and centered as possible and just apply a little pressure down on the table. Should look like that. Now we're gonna attach our bars to our ram with four more 440 screws. <laughs> That's a mouthful. As with everything on these blasters, you are threading screws into 3D printed material. You don't need to go real hard. Go ahead and put two of your 012 O-rings onto the RAM. Technically could have done this earlier. I did it slightly out of order. Next, we're gonna take this piece here, which is a really nice quality of life feature that Silly added. This basically keeps your prime forward when you're using the blaster so it doesn't come slightly deprimed and ruin the seal. Now, uh, depending on your print, you're gonna wanna clean up this little hole with an X-Acto blade. And if you've got enough tolerance, you may actually wanna go with a tiny bit of glue. Now, just like our Jupiter and other blasters we've used detents, you wanna just put a little bit of glue around the outside, make sure that this doesn't ever come out later. It is held in place in the later assembly, but I'd rather have it certain it's gonna stay. Next, we're gonna assemble our mag release and mag well. So you've got the two mag well parts here. You're gonna take one of the pins. They're all the same size. And you're gonna drop it in here. It's kind of a loose fit, but then you'll drop your mag release like so. And then you'll take this other hole, line that up there and get this squared up together. After you've done that, you're gonna hold this part together and there's a little dovetail here that fits in the dovetail over here. You're gonna just kind of rock that into place and then hold that all together. Make sure that this is this moves freely and smoothly depending on your print tolerances. It'll be fine if you've got ours for sure. And then after that, we're gonna put two screws in these holes right here and right here. Now we're ready to tie some elastic. We're gonna tie a knot on one end. You can get it nice and close to the end or you can cut off the excess and singe with a lighter if you prefer. But you wanna get that decently tight knot. You don't have to go too crazy. We're gonna go through the holes like this. So in one side and out the other. And essentially what you're gonna do is tie a knot down here as close as you can to the body. You're gonna work this knot all the way down here. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull this as tight, taut as you can. You're gonna hold this, hold that tight there and just work this knot slowly down to where you want it to be. With the end goal being to get this knot as close as you can here 
You can also use a double knot here if the knot is too loose and this will help keep it from untying. At this point, you can check that the mag actually goes in and, and locks and that it releases. And as long as it does that and it's, it's snug, you're good to go. Then you take a scissors and cut off the excess, leaving just a little bit extra. Just enough so that knot doesn't come undone by itself. Now we're gonna take this part with the detent that we did earlier and we're gonna attach it here with two 440 screws. Now we'll go ahead and attach the bottom part of the mag well with two 440 screws, one on either side. And then we'll take these two halves and we're gonna put three pins. There's only one size of pin, it's the same as all the others. And we're gonna press those together. And this is just friction fit. These don't lock in in any way. You can alternatively put in the top rail right here to hold these two parts together for extra stability. This is another good time to recheck that your mag holds. And this looks good. Next, we're gonna take the part that says Alchemist and we're gonna install an 016 O-ring. Now this is down kind of inside here, but you're gonna access it from the other side and you're just gonna kind of work it in. There's a little channel and I kind of just put my finger in there and kind of work it around. And when it's in, it should look just like that. You can just barely see that O-ring there all the way around. Next, we're gonna take the front part of the muzzle and we're gonna attach this all together. There is an additional lock for the barrel to make sure the barrel is extra secure. You're gonna take your only square nut for the whole build and you're gonna drop that in place there. And then you're gonna drive this screw from the top down into that place. But in order to do that, you're going to need to take a, another 440 and you're gonna drive this in along the side and that secures that square nut. This top screw is optional. If you prefer to have quick barrel changes, use the printed collet and skip the screw altogether. Next, we'll line up the front muzzle here and we'll put four more screws. They are 440 and they'll go into those four holes. Now we're gonna assemble half of the grip. So you're gonna take the pieces you see pictured here and you're gonna put half the grip on and we're gonna put one 440 screw right here. Then we'll take our trigger guard, insert that here and put one more 440 screw through the obvious 440 screw hole. Next, we're gonna try trap this spring in this little spot here. This spring is optional. It makes the trigger pull lighter, but sometimes it makes it too light. So this is gonna line up with the other hole on the other side here. I think it's a little easier to do the spring first and then drop the, the pin through the middle. Now we're gonna take one more 440 screw down here at the bottom. We're not going to screw this all the way in. We'll just screw it in a little bit. That's going to be the extension spring. We'll connect to that later. Next, we're gonna prep our sear by putting a 440 screw into this hole. And you don't want this to pop out the other side, so you can go till it's just a little bit past flush. This is gonna to connect to the other end of the extension spring later. And then you'll need this, we'll go through the center for the final assembly. Next, we're gonna build the stock. And uh, first thing we're gonna do is just take the medium of the 1032 screws. There are some really short ones, there are a long one, and this is the medium one. And we're just gonna drive this all the way in. You can use a drill if you want. And that is literally just there to reinforce the part so it doesn't break. Then we're gonna take the back piece of the stock and there's a dovetail here. We're gonna slide that not all the way off, but just until it's lined up, it should be flush down here at the bottom. And then we're gonna put in two 440 screws right here and right there. Now we're gonna assemble the rear part of the stock here and order of operations does matter here. We're gonna start with the long 1032 bolt and that's going to go straight down through here and it will drive in, in through there. Next, down inside here, right there and right there, you're gonna put two more 440 screws. There you can see those two screws installed. Next, we're actually gonna place our sear in here because this gets compressed by the next part and it needs to go in at the proper time. So that's that little white, white spacer, kinda of goes in there and it's trapped by those little indents on the side. Next, we can take our stock and we're gonna slide it in place and it goes over that dovetail and this is you know, slightly adjustable. It's got a little bit of play, but you can basically drop it wherever you want it and then insert this piece. When you've got the length you want, you drop a 440 screw through here and tighten that down and that will actually lock that key in place to uh, stop it from sliding out the side. So now that should be locked in place. Now we're gonna take this piece here and we're gonna slide it on here and you'll see there's little indents that line up with that little spacer. Once you've done that, you can drop two 440 down these holes and you're gonna thread those in. 
Next, we're gonna do probably the trickiest bit of the whole thing. I'm gonna try something different. If you're watching and it's still here, it means it's something that I, I think I would recommend. And that's that I'm gonna tape this down so that's in place and just one variable out of my way because I found this part pretty frustrating. Next, what you're essentially gonna do is attach one of these extension springs to these two points. Now, I like to get one side on first and we will tighten that up a little bit more later but this part here fits into a dovetail on the side there. Doing so all at once is tricky, but what you can do is essentially seat that into the dovetail and then carefully connect it up top. It may pop out like that, which is just fine because that's actually the next step. The next step is we're going to put this plate on this side. Now, the thing to remember is that we use tape to hold this, but as soon as you take the tape off, it's free to go. So I'm going to secure this, remove that little piece of painter's tape and be careful not to pull this too far away from the other assembly because you'll overstretch that spring. So I'm still holding that trigger down up top. And then I'm gonna put the whole assembly, slide the whole assembly back into the dovetail, hopefully. <laughs> it should look like that. So now, as long as I don't pull these parts apart, they are together, but just know that these two are not connected yet. So you still need to be applying some gentle pressure to hold them together. We're gonna to put two 440 screws right here into the side. Noting that, again, these are still not connected. We've only connected the side panel. Next, we're gonna take our plunger tube and our lubricant and apply a bead around here. And then take your plunger itself and we're gonna go in and out and kind of move that so that's ready to go. Set this off the edge of the table. Just know that it's covered in lubricant now and you don't want that all over yourself or table. Then we'll take this piece here and we'll install the plunger tube by pushing it all the way in. Now we're gonna take this rail piece and we can slide it onto the dovetail here. This next part is gonna be a little tricky, but essentially you've got a dovetail here that lines up with the dovetail here while getting the plunger tube installed. I feel like this, this blaster should be called Silly's Adventures and Dovetails. And eventually you'll have magic and it'll all be together. Next, we're gonna to put two top screws into the Picatinny rail. And at this point, you'll finally be free of the tyrannical trigger group. <laughs> then we'll take two more 440 screws, one on either side here. And they'll center this part right here. At this point, your trigger and sear should be activating themselves. You should be able to look down here and actually see the sear inside moving. Couple tips if you are printing your own, you can use a 3 16th drill bit if you find this hole is too tight, but with our print tolerances, we're spot on, so not too worried about that. Now we're gonna take your body bars and the front muzzle here. Make sure you've got that part up. We're gonna remove this screw. We just use that to hold that in place and get it aligned. Now we're gonna slide this down in there. Should go all the way forward, and then we're gonna reinsert this screw from the front. And this will become our kind of master tension of the, the whole assembly, which is one of the best parts about this blaster, to be honest. It's, it's no matter what happens with tolerances, your prints, all the Z levels stacking on all the various prints, this lets you tighten everything up really easily. At this point, you do not need to fully tighten that. You wanna leave some slack. Next, we're gonna continue assembling the upper housing. We're gonna take two of these pins We've got our into our magwell and those will line up here. You'll see there's a dovetail here and here. Again, this, this blaster was really like Silly's Adventures and Dovetails and I love it because it's such an elegant way to have parts go together. Then you're gonna take rail B. It's worth noting that there are custom supports in here. If you see there's like a little ridge here, you're just gonna need to break that off. It's really easy to do. You're gonna slide this in, hold this whole assembly together and then you're gonna put four screws, all 440 screws. Now we're gonna take the ram assembly and uh, there's no orientation up or down on this, it's symmetrical. And you're gonna feed this through like so. And then at this point we can take our block. And actually this is easier to slide on first. Just like that, those holes should line up. There's extra space in, inside in case people cut bars differently. Then you're gonna slide these four 1032 nuts into place and these are what the 1032 screws on the outside go through the bars to hold. And then finally we can drive all four of these screws in. Next we're gonna take our front end and we're gonna slide these together. 
If you're from the Midwest, you might know the phrase cattywampus. My bars were going cattywampus. And then before you actually close this up entirely, you're gonna need to take your rail and slide it onto the dovetail in the front, and then the dovetail in the rear will sandwich together. At this point, we can install uh, two 440 screws up top. At this point, we're gonna test fit the barrel. So we're gonna get our barrel back in here. Remember that you do have a screw here that if it's screwed in too far, will impede the barrel, but essentially we're gonna get the barrel all the way back to, you'll feel it kind of lock in and then you can hold that together and you should feel this and see how the play feels. At this point, what you're doing is you're looking for any play kind of this direction on, on the slide and you can adjust that via these bearings here by replacing how those bearings fit and how far in or out. Now, in my personal one here, I'm actually feeling like I've got more wobble side to side than I want. You can see those bearings are not making contact, so I'm actually going to take mine back out and readjust it. I'm gonna move those to the closest hole. Right now, they're in the farthest away hole. So now I've moved both those bearings in and I'm adjusting it to fit my bars. Once you've got that all back together, that's feeling much better. I have no play side to side, but it's not too tight. If it's too stiff, then you need to back one bearing off one step. Next, we're gonna take our plunger, mine the grease, drop that on there, and we're gonna slide this into our assembly, noting that there are two arrows that both need to be facing down, one on the plunger head and one on the actual body of the blaster. And you're sort of gonna to need to, to get that to line up in that hole, kind of have to jiggle it a little bit to get that to go into its uh, recess in the back. Once you've got it in correctly, it should line up. You should see the notch down and both arrows here should point down. Down on the plunger head, down on the body. Then at this point, we're gonna be able to put the blaster together. At this point, you can put a few drops of lubricant on the ram. It doesn't have to be a ton, but this is a good point to do it. And then you can squeeze the blaster together. Now we're looking for our hole back here and we're gonna put our pin, our quick strip pin in there. You can go as far as taking this all the way out, but I'm just gonna thread it out enough. And when you push it, it should go flush. And when you go far enough, it should go all the way through and you can check on the other side, this should pop out. Then we're gonna take our four millimeter screw here and we're going to actually thread this back together. This is the best part, I think, because it, it literally tensions up the entire blaster from front to back here. We're squishing all of the parts together. And this makes up for a lot of your, your home print tolerances. And when I say print tolerances, I mean just difference in printers, not that your printer is bad. I have multiple printers here at the warehouse and they all print a little bit differently. Now we're gonna go ahead and install the barrel and that's as simple as sliding this through. You might wanna give it a little twist and you should feel it seat at the base. You'll know you're in the right spot. It will bottom out. When in doubt, you can push the prime back a little bit and you can feel that there's nowhere else for it to go. You're gonna take an 016 O-ring and you're gonna thread that down there and then you're gonna take this collet, and simply push that in place. And while putting a little bit of pressure that way, you can thread that nice and tight. Finally, up top, you can also set this screw lightly. Keep in mind that it actually does screw into the physical, the aluminum of the barrel, so you don't need to screw on it too tightly. After that, we're gonna go ahead and put on our grip. That's uh, relatively simple, you just uh, slide on from the front, and then we're gonna drop this when we get this kind of right in the middle. And then after doing that, you have to line up the hole, but you drop one 440 screw from the top. And while we do have a separate tutorial for the Silly Scar, it's really easy to put together, so I'll show you quickly here. You drop this collet on like this, then you slide another O-ring on for air seal, and finally you sandwich the two together and thread the collet in. And this should be as far back as possible. And there we have it. That is the Alchemist by Silly Butts. Uh, at this point, you should have a fully functioning blaster. I would say we do. I really love this blaster. It is just a tank. It's built really well. It's a little more, few more steps put together, but the compression end to end is really nice. And it just has a nice styling too. Um, and I quite like it with this purple mag that I dyed. And I, I think this is gonna be my new personal one. I tried to pick out a color scheme that was something different for, for me personally, and uh, I think this turned out fabulous. Thank you so much to Silly Butts for putting his own tutorial together as well. We hope that we can cut this down into about half the time to make it a little simpler for the customers, and um, hopefully this helped. And let us know if you have any questions. As always, hit us up, orders at outofdarts.com by email if you have questions or get stuck on your build. We're always here to help. Thank you so much for watching.
Until next time, I'm out of darts. Now we'll take the actual front muzzle, we'll line up these four holes, and we'll drop four, 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 four